Hello everybody, this is Alexandra Sasha Bartfeld and unluckily our fifth organ talk was lost because of the bad connection at this time. So we had Matthias Reifeld talking to us about contemporary music and organ, about crossovers between electronic music and organ music. But unluckily I cannot share this video with you. Our sixth organ talk is with Evgeny Avramenko, who is a titular organist of Kaliningrad Cathedral and also creator of many interesting organ projects. It was a really passionate talk and I hope you will enjoy it. You asked for a not very well-known organist, but who is a big story and I have just a perfect uh, person for you who I am surprised is actually not very well known in Europe, but it is quite well known in Russia. I'm going to add him right now. Yes. This is Evgeny Avramenko, who is a Russian organist. Uh, he is uh, a leader of uh, big organ. Hello. Hello, Evgeny. Nice to nice to see you. Nice to meet you too. Thank How you, are you? Thank you. I mean, I'm great. It's actually so strange to talk to you uh, because we're not so far away from each other here in Kaliningrad. Yes, Hello, it's very strange for me too. <laughs> so we have a very lovely uh, people here on Organ Talk and thank you all guys for being here. And I think we're going to enjoy our talk. Just a moment, I will take my headphones because the sound now is not so good. Just a moment. Okay, okay. So guys, I'm going to introduce our guest to you because obviously if you don't know who he is, it's, you're missing <laughs> information because Yevgeny is a titular of the big organ in Kaliningrad, which is the biggest organ in Russia and one of the biggest organ in Europe. And this cathedral is a real huge concert place. So they have up to four concerts a day sometimes. And uh, Evgeny is also an author of many, many organ projects. And he teaches organ in the musical college. And besides all, he held the uh, International Organ Assembly here in Kaliningrad, which will take place this summer. Don't not to miss. I hope it will take place this summer. Me too. <laughs> and you also have a... Uh, incredible story of teaching organ in Syria in Damascus, which yes. is, is uh, something we will want to, to know more about because it seems like a very uh, unusual experience. Yes, it was a very interesting experience for me because I was very young, only 25. So interesting was before I worked in the Far East one year in Khabarovsk Philharmonie. Oh, so in okay. after far uh, east uh, i just let's explain Havarovsk yes yes, yes. In the Ch chinese side like yes yes, yes. Side uh, of russia yeah. i told about only from uh, far east i go to the middle east yeah. so it was very strange for organist <laughs> exactly so and uh, i worked uh, about seven years from uh, 2005 until 2012 so in the uh, high music institute in Damascus. So I, I played like a teacher for piano, organ, harpsichord, and like concertmeister. Oh, wow. How did, it, how did you find this way to go and teach in Syria? Uh, because uh, my teacher, you know him, uh, Alexey Shmitov, he's a perfect organist and teacher, uh, invite me uh, because his contract is uh, over. He's worked in Damascus uh, five years, five years, and uh, after this, uh, Moscow Conservatory invite him uh, to Moscow for teaching. So, and uh, he asked me if you want, you can come instead of me in Damascus. Oh. I said, "Wow, it's very, very <laughs> cool because Far East it's not for me exactly. It's very, uh, very incredible, very uh, wonderful, uh, uh, natural it's people, very different." Then, uh, like in Moscow, like in Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Kaliningrad, but uh, it uh, was very difficult working uh, so far from my home. So, and we go to the Damascus, and uh, at first, uh, it was the first experience when I uh, worked abroad, abroad uh, in, in uh, other uh, language and other. Uh, 
mentioned. So all is different. This was a, like cultural shock. Did you work in English or you had to learn? Uh, as usually, English uh, about uh, 90% maybe and 10% in Arabic. Wow. Well, yes, because uh, as usually uh, everyone, not everyone, every maybe second uh, people uh, talk English. For example, my uh, special organist, I had uh, only one student for organ, like a first instrument. He speak Russian like me, like you, because his mother was uh, from Russia. Yes, Nizar Karful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool guy. Yeah, well, he's amazing. He's as far as I know, he's in Germany now and he's doing yeah, yeah. Really, really as a doctor. Yeah, it's a, he told me he is working at a hospital where they have a chapel. Yeah. He plays a hospital chapel from time to time. Yes, Latin sure. She... Yeah. And um, how is the organ stage in Syria? Like, are this Syrian people that have an organ in the churches or it's an instrument for the concert halls? Uh, in uh, Syria, it's a very uh, uh, multicultural and multi-religion uh, country because it was uh, in mosques, uh, exactly, and some church, Armenian church, Catholic church, uh, Russian church, a lot of. So, and, uh, and two churches in Damascus, uh, Latin church, uh, St. Anthony, and uh, Halep, Aleppo, the same Latin church, was uh, two pipe organs. The same year, 1937, in uh, in Damascus, it was uh, Spät, Gebruder Spät. Mm -hmm. Very, very good sound, 19 uh, stops and uh, perfect acoustic pneumatic organ. But uh, of course, it was uh, a lot of problem with the uh, repair, with uh, no climate control, because uh, yeah. sometimes that summer uh, degree about 50, yes, outside. Oh, yeah. It's not good climate for organ, of course. So, and uh, Halep, uh, the same, uh, but uh, pneumatic organ, but uh, rigger, Austrian oh. rigger, yes. Mm -hmm. And third, uh, the biggest organ in the country was in uh, Damascus Opera. It was a big uh, one uh, instrument. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, I, I know what you're talking about. It's uh, like on, on the airbag. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for manuals, uh, the name of uh, Laukhof. Laukhof. Laukhof, but without acoustic, absolutely, absolutely, okay. zero. Opera, opera hall. Yes, 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 very big opera house, very big scene, but in hall, no one, half second maybe, only, like in room. I don't know why. It was maybe <laughs> some mistakes with uh, architecture, with uh, acoustic master. I don't know. So, and uh, for me, uh, number one organ was a uh, spät. And uh, we, together with Nizar, make a tuning uh, maybe one or two, twice at, at week, and to play uh, <laughs> more seldom than uh, a lot of uh, tuning, repairing, something, oh, uh, change the details, because very old and uh, without uh, good hands. I just, sorry, I just have to tell, Hello to everybody. I cannot say interrupt you every time when someone join, joins us, but I, I appreciate really every person who is listening to us now. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, in the, this organ is the opera hall. Is it this kind of organ which is movable? So yeah. Okay. Because it's very, very big scene. And so interesting inside of the scene, was perfect acoustic. When we turned on the uh, border of sand, no one second. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, that's strange. Yeah, it's it's a quite um, a big problem building a hall which will be suitable for organ and and also for opera, for example, because opera takes less basically takes less acoustic. Than uh, it it's maybe was uh, some problem with the fire. Before the uh, finish of the building, mm -hmm. before it was fire big, okay. and uh, maybe maybe I don't know I don't work uh, at this time in Damascus, mm -hmm. and people told me maybe some problem with uh, after fire. Mm -hmm. So Stefano asked if is there a lot of organ concerts in Syria? 
In Syria? Yeah. Uh, only three. Pipe organ, only three. No, the ah. concerts. Ah, concerts. Uh, now? <laughs> I don't think it's... <laughs> no, about now, I, I, I don't know about organ concert because it's uh, now in the country um, no one professional organist. Uh, but uh, by the time... In, you... in my time, yes. Uh, no, it was uh, maybe uh, not more than five in the year. Maybe two or three in the church and uh, one in the opera and one in Halep only. It's maximum. Mm -hmm. But still for a country which as culturally is not uh, that strongly related to uh, organ music, it's really incredible. Have you... It was exotic yeah. for people. Yeah. Like for us, uh, for example, if you, uh, if you know music instrument oud or yeah. buzuk, yes, they won't come to concert, uh, concert oud music. They won't come uh, on the concert oud music. It will be interesting too. Interesting, but maybe uh, once only. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. It's uh, other culture, uh, other tradition. Mm -hmm. It's uh, only uh, like exotic. But uh, in Damascus uh, was uh, more uh, people who is, uh, have um, education from uh, America, in Europe, in Russia too, of course. And then people uh, uh, come to the concert and ask me about instrument and uh, student invite uh, relatives and uh, friends, like, like this. Okay. It's not big tradition, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I was imagining. We had a question from that organ girl who is a big friend of uh, Organ Talk. She asked you, what is your practice routine look like? How do you practice new pieces? Uh, practice new pieces? Look, here is my organ at home. Three manuals. It's not so big, but for, my, for me it's enough. Tak, very. Mm -hmm. Tak. I practice at home, Is as usually. Is that system? No, 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 no. It's uh, my organ system. Okay. It's the same. <laughs> We have a, so Lamatevana, uh, it means Stefano asked if there be, were a lot of public in the in these five concerts in Syria, if people were still coming. Uh, in church, yes, maybe, uh, but in opera, no. As usually was uh, maybe half, half only. Oh, not so much. If we play, uh, we played uh, together with choir, with orchestra. Of course, of course, a lot of public, right. but alone, alone, not so big interest. Okay, uh, we have a question from Sandro. If, have you studied organ literature? Basically, what I was willing to ask you: you studied the Moscow Concert. Yeah. Yes, but did you study organ specifically, or you studied piano and the wide range of? Uh, Together, piano and organ, yeah. yes. Okay, but you know, it's uh, to answer the Sandra's question. We uh, in Russia, we don't have church music, we don't have Kirchen music, so basically, we all are concert organists and we study. Uh, it was Russian tradition, you know, because uh, for the organist in Russia, come from the uh, piano. Yeah. Start on the piano because it's we have no a, a lot of pipe organs. How many pipe organs in the country? in our country, about uh, 155, 56, I think. It's nothing for big yeah, country. There is, this, there is a book with the yeah. Russian organs, which is, if you take the, the big Russia and the small yes. book, it's absolutely It's nothing, absolutely. <laughs> we have only three uh, organ uh, cities, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Kaliningrad only. Mm -hmm. Half of country is absolutely without pipe organs. Yeah, I mean, you have, of course, you have Nizhny Novgorod, you have Kazan, you have Chilabin. There are cities with yes. organs. Yes, two or three maximum. Yeah. Two or three. It's, what is it? Nothing. Only for uh, little practicing for the students, you know. When I studied uh, in Moscow Conservatory, uh, twice I can practice only in a small class or maybe twice a month maybe once uh, in mo at months uh, in a small hall, for example. What is it for our week? Nothing. Nothing, because 
Uh, I, I started it, it, it yeah. Yes. Now uh, I, I needed go to the uh, conservatory, church, even in quarantine. I need I needn't go to work. I have mm -hmm. two instruments and piano, two here. Mm -hmm. You and organ. Yes. Johann Sebastian Bach back there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I just say hi to everybody, and yeah, we have more and more people joining us. Um, okay, I, I was just to come back to the Syrian question just for a little while. Have you had? Is it true that you had to leave because of the war, or you left before it? After Damascus? Yeah. After Damascus, I was like a gastarbeiter. Okay. Without work, without uh, plans, because I uh, I come back to my home, to Moscow, and uh, about six months, I think, what I need to do? Mm, so it was very uh, difficult, very strange time for me. And uh, after this, my wife, uh, Ksenia, she is a uh, flutist, Ask me. I love her so much. Yeah. <laughs> Big greetings from her. So uh, she asked me, maybe let's go to Svetlogorsk, to Kaliningrad region. We'll try to uh, start from zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, why not? If I have no uh, good work in Moscow. Mm -hmm. I don't like uh, Moscow like a uh, city from, for uh, life. For I myself have... only, of course. Yeah. So for study, for concert, I very like it. I have a lot of friends. So it's, it was my childhood uh, in Moscow, in center. But uh, for life, for everyone, uh, for every day, uh, again, traffic uh, and all, oh, oh my God, no, I don't want. And uh, we come to, um, to Kaliningrad, to Svetlogorsk and uh, First uh, two years, uh, we work at, uh, in music schools only, but mm, it's very strange experience after High Music Institute. Yeah, so, and uh, after this, I was uh, again uh, without work, and I was very happy because uh, I had a lot of concerts in Russia, abroad. So, and after this, uh, five yeah, five years ago, I was. Uh, uh, invite uh, for teaching in uh, music college for organ uh, like second instrument and after again after one year uh, our conductor Arkady Feldman invite me work in uh, cathedral like a second organist and so uh, two days ago yes first of April was uh, for year uh, I was uh, organist in the uh, cathedral. Yeah, I actually I I remember this day because it was the first of April. Yeah. And I read it on the internet and I was like, isn't it true or it's a joke? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, everybody playing April Fool's uh, jokes and I was, oh, is it real? Oh yes, please let it be real. And we I was <laughs> looking for more news and more news because I I didn't know if it's it's a joke or it's a true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but did you leave? Uh, you you came back from Syria because the war started. Or yes. Yeah. Oh. We wait one year uh, because war started in uh, 2011, but uh, in Damascus was very calm. It's okay. nothing. So and uh, before the Christmas 2011 was a uh, 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 attacks bombing in center of Damascus, and after this I. Um, I told for my wife and daughter, you need to uh, go to the home. And uh, at the beginning of March, I uh, come to home too. What an experience for an organist. I mean, for any person, but I just, I just uh, absolutely, how to say it, admire this strange and strong way you had to go through because it's uh, yes yeah. when when i played i, I remember uh, when i played in poland concert in uh, poznan so in cathedral and i practice uh, on the rehearsal at night and uh, one uh, uh, nun. 
Now, ask me, where are you, where are you from? I am from Russia, but now live in Damascus. And what are you doing in Damascus? I teach Arabic people, students uh, play on the organ. And the reaction was incredible. Matka Boska. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Matka Boska is, oh my God, in Poland. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Arabic students and organ, it's incredible. Did you feel any influence from their traditional music? On the, uh, on the organ, no. No. Because it's... Uh, no, but uh, we played uh, two concerts, uh, World Primer, uh, Azerbaijanian music for organ, oud, buzuk and uh, drums. You can see on the, my channel in YouTube. It's very, very cool interesting experience because nobody plays the same uh, before us yeah of course i don't think anyone would ever think about wood with organ so and uh, this september last september i played in baku in uh, academy music uh, and uh, in the church on the festival uh, 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 it was a uh, very famous azerbaijan composer and uh, the camp uh, director from organ cathedra in uh, music academy как будет поздравлять забыл celebrate congratulate Cong congratulate me after concert oh you play azerbaijan music it's very good it's very cool i played uh, two symphony by uh, arif mirzoev uh, so i told uh, Maybe do you know uh, World Primer? I played uh, Azerbaijan uh, modern music for oud, buzuk, organ, drum, and reaction was again very cool. It was you, really. Everyone, our student knows this <laughs> record. <laughs> it was a big surprise for me. I was very famous in Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> we have two more questions. We have. Olga asked, which language did you teach in Syria? You, I already asked ask you, it was basically mostly English and some Arabic. Yeah, and yes. We have that organ girl who says that her family is from Poznan. And this is a beautiful, beautiful place, Poznan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's new organ, uh, Jan Drazdovich. Mm. Uh, in the cathedral? In cathedral, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They very old church. This very beautiful um, in the basilica. They have this beautiful Ladigast or Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perhaps I will play this uh, September in this church. Oh, I very hope. I, I, I went to a master class there with uh, Balash Shabo. Last mm -hmm. with Julia, and uh, I, I absolutely I spent nights in this church because it's romantic organ. It's very beautiful. Okay, Olga says he, she cannot hear me. Maybe it will be better this way. Um, okay, we, we've talked a lot about what happened to you in the past, but let's get back to, to reality. And because I know in, um, in the cathedral where you're an organist now, the organ life is much more active than pretty much anywhere in the world. Because I know that in summer you have up to three, four concerts a day with like short concerts and big concerts in the evening. And yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's always full of people. It's absolutely incredible to... Yes, I really like this it. Acti this activity, yeah. Uh, I was uh, just, you know, for myself, I always thought that if you have, as if you and it's an organist as a place with a big concert activities where a lot of people coming. You can, you, I mean, it's, it's a really, I mean, you have to be really lucky because you earn a lot of the contact, of the um, connection, of the experience. Yes, as usually. Yeah, yeah. Would you, what, I mean, how does it feel to, to work there? I mean, it's just hard work, I can imagine. It's very hard work, but it's, uh, for me, it's like hobby. It's not work for me. It's the best. <laughs> I really like it. Because I never work. <laughs> it's rest. Okay. And I mean, I, I, I absolutely share your, uh, 
um, your attitude because for me I can I can practice I can tune instrument and I just enjoy everything. You can lose time. Yes, yes, yes. If yeah. you sit on the organ at night in the church alone, it's fantastic. Yeah, and, if, and if it's your big organ, it's yes. I mean, it's for example, yeah. or two organs together, like yeah. in our cathedral. Yeah. Hello. And um, I was um, thinking, like, um, you have to. I mean, for example, from my French experience in France. The organists don't tune the instrument. If something is wrong with the instrument, they have to call the um, the um, organ organ builder, and mm -hmm. the organ builder are overfilled with work. And you, I mean, luckily you are there are two of you, so we have two organists as a cathedral, and so you you take care of the instrument of the two instruments, and you play all the concerts basically. When I come uh, first time in cathedral, I was uh, like um, second organ master uh, too. So, and after two works, uh, two years, I ask, no, I have no time absolutely for a rest because I have uh, a lot of concerts. So, uh, for example, in uh, three years ago, 2017, I played, I was on the scene 444 times. Pretty much every second day. Uh, sometimes I, at summer, uh, I played once, five times at the day. A day. And different programs, of course. It's very, very uh, hard, of course, for, for me too, for mind. And I, I work in the music college too. I have uh, 15 students. And uh, three years ago, I, I lived in Svetlogorsk, and every day, 100 kilometers, like driver, yes? Mm -hmm. So it was very, uh, very difficult for me. Now I'm only organist. For me, it's better, because okay, it's so a, really, it's another one, the same organist, the same uh, organ master. Yeah, so now there is another different person taking care of the organs. Yes, Mansur, second organist, and Galina. Okay, oh, it's great. So you don't have to take all the responsibilities of... For me, it was re enough. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, there is an amazing organist and a grand fa great friend of mine, Jean-Baptiste Monod. Yeah, I know him. Who, who constructed his, re uh, his replaceable organ, his Orgue de Voyage. And he has his own responsibility of playing the instrument, tuning the instrument, uh, constructing the instrument and transporting the instrument. He is unicum. Jean-Baptiste, yes. I, I remember I, I was in the workshop in Zurich uh, 18 years ago with uh, Maestro Jean Guillou. And, uh, Jean, yes. And uh, Jean-Baptiste Monod played. It was incredible because he was very young, 18, I think, 17, 18, maybe, years mm -hmm. old. And he plays very, very perfect. 18 years ago, and uh, Maestro Jean, every time after performing, Jean Baptiste thought, Look, you need to play the same <laughs> 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 for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I absolutely adore the personality of Jean Guillou and the way he, um, he shared his thoughts about music. Yeah. I mean, I never had any classes with him, but I, I know him in person and it was really, really incredible, incredible personality. Um, I have one more complicated question for you because as you said, you go out uh, on the stage sometimes after up, up to five times a day and for you guys just to see what is the difference uh, between the work basically you, the organist has at the church in Germany or in France or pretty much anywhere, and the work which Evgeny is doing at the moment. And um, because, I mean, you have such a big experience of playing for a different kind of public or just for a lot of public, do you think that nowadays um, playing the big French symphonies or maybe big uh, regular fa fantasies is hard for, for people to listen to? Uh... I don't know about uh, French symphonies music, 
because uh, I think it's more uh, comfortable for uh, even for tourist ears uh, because regular it's a little so hard of course for mine for me I don't know um, now when we have a very strange time in the world uh, we have uh, time for practice and uh, <laughs> in my library what I practice uh, now two sonatas by Gilman for example mm-hmm. uh, Ritter, Sonata by Ritter. I very like uh, German uh, romantic music. So, and uh, Bach, exactly, of course, but no Ritter. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe later. I played, I played before, but it's not my um, lovely composer. Okay. Because I, I had, it was a, it was before you became an organist of the cathedral. It was, I, I don't know, 10 years ago, more than uh, years ago. Uh, Vladimir Khamikov? No, 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 no. Artyom? It was, no, it was, by, by the time Artyom was the organist, but I mean, it was a concert of Olivier Latry, but you you weren't there. Yes, I was thinking if you were there. It was a concert by Olivier Latry in our cathedral, where mm-hmm. you're working now. And as far as I remember, he was playing the third Vienna symphony. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there was a couple sitting right next to me, and the man said, oh my God. When is it going to end? <laughs> I was so shocked <laughs> because where from? You know, from here, from Kaliningrad. I don't. I mean, it was just a person sitting close to me, listening to Olivier Latry playing Vierne, uh-huh. and appa- apparently it was a person who just came to the concert that didn't know much about organ music. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering if, if in your opinion, this experience of listening, for example, oh, we have a cathedral listening. <laughs> Hello. If, if, if in your opinion, it's the public is used to listen to the long pieces, or it's, or you, for example, you prefer to have a shorter pieces in the concert that are easier to digest, to say so. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Sash, you can use the Какой вопрос был? Чуть uh, отвлекся. Uh, I will just translate for a second. Uh, как вам кажется, насколько um, хорошо ли воспринимает публика крупные произведения, или вы считаете, что лучше играть произведения менее крупной формы, которые скажем, okay. более okay. переваримы? Uh, I think for the uh, tourist small concert, of course, it's need uh, more short pieces and uh, more famous like. Dimol Takata by Bach, like uh, Albinoni, like uh, small uh, chorals, like uh, bright toccatas, like Vidor, Vier. So for uh, evening concert, of course, it's, uh, we must uh, to play all music and modern music and avant-garde and very um, old like before Bach, before Buxtehude, all uh, uh, everyone epoch, everyone composer for uh, people who recognize it, style, recognize the name. Mm-hmm. So I, I think so, because it's uh, two different uh, lines. Do you feel like talking about the public which comes regularly to the concerts, do you feel it's possible to educate the public to make them better understand contemporary music or better yes. understand all music? Yes, because uh, in our cathedral uh, we have public as a tourist, as usually. Yes, about uh, maybe um, 90 persons. So, and uh, if uh, public come first and last time, uh, after um, maybe after contemporary music, it was a negative um, some uh, mood, mm-hmm. because it's, what is it? So, and uh, if we will play uh, some uh, new compositions, uh, 
difficult composer. You know what I mean in diff uh, difficult composer. Yeah, sure. So like, uh, I don't know, Rager, like Glass, like Misian, like Eskesh, like Naji Hakim. So it's uh, difficult for uh, public for uh, for first time for first experience we need uh, to say about this music about this composer not so like lecture for students of course but um, some uh, maybe two minutes only only for the mood yeah but do you i mean you have the public which comes to your evening concerts your regular public uh, do you feel like you can educate those people to listen to the more complicated music, if you can influence them? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Because we have uh, some uh, uh, local people who is come on the every big organ concert, but it's not so much. Maybe um, not more 10, 12 persons only. I think so. Maybe I have a mistake. I mean, you have every time you have a big evening concert you have a full hall of people yes 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 who is who is come not like a tourist first and last time who is come on the every concert from uh, local people like fun club yeah i see, I see <laughs> but i just i just hope that you're mistaken there are more than 12. yeah Can you maybe tell tell our viewers about organ assemblies because maybe someone will come yeah. Oh, perhaps, like people talk in Damascus, uh, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Uh, yes, I very really hope uh, then uh, in May is finish all these uh, crazy days with quarantine, because uh, I, I can't sit at home, really, I, I try, but I can't, my mind is uh, not understand for what, I need to play concert, I need a lecture, I need to work, so, Of course, we need to sit at home, uh, but I, I, I hope uh, we, will made, um, we will make it uh, in July, like usually, and uh, I, I would like to invite everyone to come to the organ assembly for the biggest uh, organ in Russia and uh, very uh, good, um, very uh, cool professors from uh, France and uh, Europe, uh, fr uh, from Germany, from Germany. We will have uh, three big interesting concerts and uh, workshops and some um, uh, some time for the uh, tourism, for the look uh, and recognize better uh, Kaliningrad region. It's not only workshop, it's for everyone. <laughs> and yeah. for swim and for uh, sea and for, <laughs> for all. Yeah, and how long will it uh, last How many days? Uh, six days. One week. Six days. Yes. Six a week. And how much does it cost for the European? Now? Yeah. Uh, now I don't know exactly. Maybe about five or six. It's not so much because now we have uh, this uh, strange time. Ah, сколько стоит? Ой, надо посмотреть на сайте собора. Я сейчас боюсь соврать. I just want to, to tell you guys, if you're interested, that you can, uh, we have this big organ assembly, which is a masterclass. It's annual masterclass with two big teachers. We have Jean-Baptiste Robin coming to this year. And the German teacher will be from, am I mistaken, it's one from Lübeck? From Bremen, from Bremen. From Bremen, yeah. And uh, it's, you can easily get the visa for Kaliningrad because you apply just through internet and you don't need to go anywhere yeah. to get it. And it's absolutely enjoyable experience also playing the amazing organ and just having great time. We have a question. Do you have any idea to which young people to listen organ music? I think that some of them, when, say, when they discover organ literature, has interests, but the problem in reaching them... Okay, yeah, but the problem is reaching them. Uh, about young people? About... Uh... Bring young people to the organ. Uh, for uh, listen or for study? I think both. <laughs> um, uh, last uh, maybe three or four years, I very like uh, play, not only uh, uh, 
Но он в Калининград, он за гастроли, как будет выездные концерты, гастроли, тур, yes, in tour. I played, I like played uh, two concerts for uh, children and for uh, uh, as usually evening concert. So on the small uh, first small concert for uh, children, I played program about 40-50 minutes. Not so hard music, of course. It's uh, it's maybe uh, some uh, small pieces by Andreas Vilsher, for example, from uh, Sorry, Suicide. I want to interrupt you just to say that in Russia, the big evening concert is considered about an hour and a half, and a small concert is about. 45-50 minutes. Yes. Um, in Europe, pretty much, the big concert is about 50 minutes. 50 yes, yes. Minutes. <laughs> so, and, um, and uh, before it, I, I like uh, to talk with the public. Uh, sometimes I uh, made a small speech. What is it? What is the piece? Uh, what is the... Um, image for um, children very important to see this music not only listen to see yeah. imagination yes if uh, for example i play uh, some piece by fish or i, I don't know rabbit uh, or um, grasshopper uh, anything it's very important uh, to connect uh, как сказать, представление об этом, слуховое, визуальное. Visual and... The visual and uh, yes. listening imagination. Yes. Yeah. То есть соотношение. Mm -hmm. So the relation between listening... Тогда детям становится интереснее за этим наблюдать. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So you, you... Basically, you really educate kids on... I try. Using the, using the fantasy on... Yes. This is basically what I was, you know, I had a project in Berlin called Fenster 21, which called uh, Windows, uh, a Window 21, which mm -hmm. was for me, it's like a window to the 21st century. And it, was, it wasn't for kids, but for, for adults. And I was trying to, because I love contemporary music so much, I was trying to explain them how to listen to contemporary music, which can be crazy. Yes, a lot of music, a, a lot of interesting music. I remember how played uh, Cameron Carpenter, yes, in Berlin, for the child concert. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and basically what I was trying to do, basically the same, I wasn't just using the uh, kids' um, associations, but using the images or like thinking about water sliding down or thinking about, I don't know, vibrating chords which makes you imagine something in your head. And it's basically you make a, the music you listen to becomes a soundtrack of a picture of your, in your head. Yes, 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 yes. And then it's, If you know this music, it's, another, yeah. yes. Yeah, or if you're just willing to, to, to look for it, to search for image, I think it helps a lot to people who are not familiar with classical music. Yeah. I'm really glad you said it because I was looking for someone who thinks the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, we have not that much time left, but um, I know that um, there is now this uh, online concerts project is coming yes. up uh, in the cathedral. I'm going to play next week, so guys. Okay, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we can you tell a bit more about that? Are you going to play and where can you, or can people listen to that? Uh, very seldom. Uh, I, I don't, I like rock music, but mm -hmm. uh, if you will play something not classical, but me uh, is classical musician. Yes, of course, mm -hmm. I am not a rock musician. I like, but uh, I think maybe it's not very professional. <laughs> Like in just the same. If I if I have a notes, okay, no problem. But with a improvised, maybe a little um, different. I afraid for the quality. <laughs> but sometimes I, I I play, of course. Mm -hmm. We have two more questions from Dominique Poulet, 
and thank you, Demi. Merci beaucoup d'être ici avec nous. Um, does the, this complicated period inspires you to write music? If I mean, I don't know who was. We, we can both answer this uh, this question. Are you, Evgeny, inspired by complicated contemporary music? Does it touch you? Uh, about contemporary music. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I have a lot of uh, say, предложений um, at современных of offers from the uh, modern composers, but uh, not every time I am agree play this because if I uh, like I will like this music I can play good. If I don't like I don't will even try. Because uh, I very like, I, I don't know who is uh, say it first, which uh, your favorite composer, which your favorite piece. Mm -hmm. My favorite piece, what I play at this moment. At this moment, yeah. <laughs> if I don't like this piece, public is, uh, listen this and don't believe me. It's needed for me, sorry. Mm. And uh, just to answer your question, Dominique, I personally, I, of course, I have the same uh, position as Evgeny because sometimes I get, offer, or I get to work a lot with uh, contemporary composers, just advising them on how to write for organ. And of course, there are, there are, in my opinion, better on. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Um, if I mean, if I don't feel this music of course i'm not i'm not going to play this okay Dominic, i have to re and re re-understand your question oh if this if you are more inspired you can if now by this hard period of time do you feel the need to play more music are you inspired to do more music when you cannot go out okay, does it motivate you uh, for me, uh, for me now, uh, all the same, but without work. I practice every day. I try to practice every day. So and uh, but uh, without concerts, without my students. Uh, so it's. I think it's very difficult, like for everyone, from us, from musician, from organist, and uh, we don't know how to finish it. It. So, but. Uh, mm, Ah, do you play Arab composer or music for organ? Uh, no, I, I don't play Arabic composer for organ because, uh, as I know, nobody play, uh, nobody uh, write music for the organ from Arabic world. Expect maybe Najee Hakim. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, we have a question from Stefano. Do you think the traditional Lystian concert, a musician who plays in public who listen, is going to disappear. Можно чуть помочь переводом. Как ты думаешь, как вы просите, как вы думаете, вот эта традиция листовских концертов, где публика слушает, музыкант играет, все конец, а что она уйдет? We had a big discussion with Stefano. Yeah. Now I don't afraid about this. Uh, because it's a tradition more than uh, 200 years and for uh, some uh, groups of public it uh, will be need uh, every time I think so Dominique ask if you are if you compose also no no you don't <laughs> no. a lot of good composer I'm not Bach for what <laughs> How many hours a day do you practice? Uh, a day? Mm -hmm. Not so much, maybe one, two, three. Not so much. I am very lazy. <laughs> oh yeah, we know. That's why you work all those jobs. <laughs> and uh, sometimes not every day. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's to answer the question about the listening type of concert, um, in Russia, Stefan, we have an absolutely different take on the concerts, I mean, in comparison to what you see in Europe. So here we basically, this is basically what we have. We have big, long concerts with public listens, with classical 
uh, program and it's I mean it's not changing that badly with the time as the way it does it happens in Europe we still have big full concert halls for organ concerts and uh, about time of the concert no about that um, uh, you know in Europe mm -hmm. they have basically for the organ concerts uh, less public you talk no go but here it, it keeps going here the uh, public is really strong yeah it's uh, I think it's from traditional because in uh, Europe organ is uh, ordinary instrument and uh, in Russia sometimes it's uh, exotic the same and uh, if you play uh, some concert in uh, Siberia in the far east it's uh, full holes no empty uh, place so it's because uh, for me of course, like um, uh, any musician, I think uh, more comfortable play in the full hall. But uh, you know, phrase: uh, if you have no big, uh, not a lot of public on the concert, you can t t talk for yourself. In empty hall, music sound is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I there is a story which Olivia Latry told me as he was just starting being the organist at the Notre Dame. Once they had a concert where only five people came to the concert. And you can imagine five people in the whole Notre Dame Cathedral. It's just, it doesn't feel right. And what, what he has done, they invited all the people to come up and sit at the organ to see besides the organist. And he said it was one of the most touching concert experiences to have the public just around you. Yes, I remember the same history with uh, Mstislav Rostropovich. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same uh, was with me in uh, Kazakhstan, Karaganda, when I played a uh, children's concert and was maybe about 15, child only, and I invite everyone to the uh, upstairs and they sit and look near the organ 40 minutes. This was incredible for everyone and for me too. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. I actually, following the story of Olivia Latry, I made the same thing as once it happened to me to have only seven people at the concert. Yeah. And it was really, really different because as an organist, we usually quite far away from the public and we're sitting to the, our backs to the public, I mean, except for... Like this is better than uh, playing in empty hall, like online yeah. concert, really. Yeah. You need to uh, switch all your fantasy. You think, ah, me listen, maybe now in Australia, in America, <laughs> in Peru, in Africa. <laughs> no, in empty, no one. <laughs> it's no difficult, one. difficult and very strange. Yeah, it's true. So we have just uh, about seven minutes left and I just want to ask you what are your, I mean you have so many projects, you have also well, Kaliningrad is the uh, organ uh, capital of capital, Russia, you yes. have, you have a principal community, so you do so much. What are your next plans, what's, what's the way to come next? Uh, I start now uh, final donation for the translate uh, books about uh, pipe organs from uh, Serbia. Okay. Because uh, I think in our country, in Russia, nobody knows uh, about organ in Serbia, really. What is I it? Don't think, <laughs> I don't think anywhere. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's not really well known. So I, uh, I take a um, book, uh, my friend uh, George uh, Mandic, my friend, uh, my friend uh, from Facebook, and uh, he's uh, agree about translate. So I find a translator uh, in Serbia, and I think maybe at at autumn, its project will be ready. I hope. Okay. So you crowdfunding for founding for this project now? Yes. I try to find okay. uh, it's it's small, uh, not not big uh, money, about uh, five hundred euros only. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have a comment from Dominique Poulet, who is the organist in Fontainebleau in France. Uh, seven people at the concert in France is a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, we're so sorry. I, I really hope, Dominic, you will be able to experience the concert here once because it's, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it fills you with the hope that people listen to the organ. Oh, by the way, we both, uh, with you, Evgeny, worked on this uh, movie project of uh, history of the organ. Ah, yes. Yeah, it was also your idea to, to translate the four, four movies of the history of the organ, which I, I mean, it was one of the first things I was impressed I, or I like, learned more about the organ was watching these movies 12 years ago. And uh, how, is that, how did that develop? I want to say again a very big thank you for you for uh, help with translate, with all. So uh, now we have a Russian uh, trans uh, translation and uh, I show for the, my students in music college. I gave to my uh, colleagues in Russia. Uh, I think it's very neat for the, <clears throat> for the tradition, for the uh, practicing. It's a, a lot of more uh, interesting information. Yeah. I just hope it will be spread widely in the in the universities and colleges to just for people to be able to have this information. Uh, if uh, somebody asks me about the, this movie, I can uh, send you send you no problem. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, it's great. So I think we'll have to round to finish our talk. If you guys don't have more questions because our hour is almost over. It was really quick hour. I, I really enjoyed talking to you. And I want to, I don't have a date of the next organ talk now because we're talking, now we're talking about organ talk. We're discussing uh, a date, but there is going to be a one very interesting person to come to talk to us next. I will keep you guys updated. Thank you so much, Evgeny, for thank you. For welcome to, to, to us. You guys, you are welcome to go to the to the page of a cathedral. This is Sabor Thirty Nine. I will type just right here in the chat and discover more about the organ and also watch our concerts online because from this week on there are uh, weekly organ concerts at two p.m. and um, I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you for, for joining us. And let's say, everybody, thank you to Evgeny for talking. Thank you and good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. Be good. Thank you. Bye.